Hey guys. What's Zaya sitting with me on my lap? I am just going to be talking to you today about my breast augmentation that I got four years ago already. So let's start right. Okay, keep calm, Pash. Keep calm. So I just want to first start off by saying that this had nothing to do with anybody else but myself ever since the beginning. So I'm just going to start right at the beginning of my story. This started in my mind when I basically hit puberty, when I was about 13 years old. Every single year, all I was asking for was a padded bra. I used to wear two, sometimes three bras. I used to take my socks and stuff my bras. Um, I, just, I just didn't understand why I was so flat chested and I continued to just be flat chested when all the other girls were wearing boobs in school and I I always have, I love boobs and I just think just because of who I am I, I've always been a little bit of a sexy person, I feel like it's in my blood, it's just in me and being sexy and having a flat chest, it just for me personally, flat chests are beautiful, don't get me wrong, I, do, I did lo love my little boobs and my flat chest but not nearly as much as I really knew it wasn't me. I just always wanted boobs. I, it was something I thought about every single day, literally from when I was 13 years old till I had my boobs done. Not a day went past that I didn't think about boobs and having boobs. I'm, it's not even a joke. Like it was just constantly in my mind. I was like, where am I? And I just know that if I had boobs, I'd feel way more like myself. Yeah, that was my decision. It was something I thought about every day and yeah. Here's me, 24 years old, living in Cape Town by myself. Now let me start off by saying that years and years ago when I was about, I can't remember how old I was, I think I was in grade 6. What? How old are you in grade 6? I don't know, I was like 11 or 12. And my mother had breast cancer. So, and because of my upbringing and because of my mother having breast cancer, it was just a big deal for me to get my boobs drawn, my, my boobs done. Like my mom always hated the fact that I always used to say that, that I'm gonna get my boobs done and I always used to watch Dr. Nano 210 and I was like obsessed with it and she hated it. Um, and then, yeah, so on top of that, her hating it and then having breast cancer it was like a very big decision for me. Um, I'm living here by myself in Cape Town having all these other major life decisions and then I, this was something I really really wanted and I couldn't get it out of my mind and when I want something I get it um, because I don't want to live this life without regrets and I just knew that if I had boobs I would feel like myself. Yeah that de decision was crazy but I did it by myself. I booked a consultation, so my first consultation that I booked, it was actually with a surgeon in Bree Street, I can't remember his name, but I booked, that was my very first consultation, and you book like a thousand rand for a consultation just to talk about having the op, and you know, to meet the surgeon. So I went to this um, consultation, and just immediately, he was just, it was so quick, so fast, I, he hardly even looked me in my eyes. He was just word vomiting off like pages like he it was like he didn't really care at all and i came out of that appointment and i didn't feel very comfortable because you know i'm just vulnerable yeah i walked out of that consultation i wasn't feeling very comfortable so i decided i was going to find another surgeon and see if i could book another consultation even though it was money like a whole thousand rand just for the consultation which I didn't want to spend, but I was like, I obviously felt determined enough that I wasn't comfortable with that surgeon. So uh, yeah, found another surgeon, and his name is Dr. Yanni Barnard, who ended up being my surgeon for my breast augmentation. So I booked this consultation with him, and as soon as I walked into the door, he made me feel extremely comfortable. He was so real and cool, and of course he looked me in my eyes, and told me everything that I needed to know had he asked me like he kept asking me if I have any questions what do I want to know on top of what he's told me he was funny yeah he just made me feel very comfortable and I felt good after that consultation and I decided okay this is my surgeon okay so let me show you what I got here this is my my little wristband that I wore in the hospital um, yeah my actual breast augmentation date was the 25th of july 2017 so it was like four years ago 
24 years and 10 months old. And it says, I don't know if you can read that, if you're going to be able to read that. Here I am just waiting in my hospital bed before going in for my operation. As much as I was extremely nervous about this whole thing, I was so excited. It was just something I always wanted. I've never been like so determined for something in my life. <laughs> Our operation date, the 25th of July, was a Tuesday and I remember having to be at the hospital early in the morning, like early. It was like 8 a.m. or something and um, I wasn't allowed to eat for like 6 to 8 hours before that. So I had supper the night before, went to sleep, woke up and wasn't really allowed to have breakfast, I don't think, not that I can remember. And then I went to the hospital early in the morning and then I had to stay the whole day in the hospital not being able to eat anything until my operation which was only at four o'clock in the afternoon and i think it was even delayed i think i think it might have even gone to like five o'clock in the afternoon um so that was hectic but also i can't even remember that much i was just too excited to even thinking about food um i just remember them giving you a lot of pills and then I just used to like slowly start to get more and more drugged up and then by the time they wheeled me into that operation room I literally I, can't, I can hardly remember anything I just remember being there and then not being there literally here's my first selfie of my new boobies straight out of the operating room let me answer all these questions for you how much did it cost it cost 40,000 Rand. I've actually got some of these papers here. This says the hospital. This was in 2017, right? The hospital, I paid 9,500 Rand. The surgeon, 18,000. Anesthetic was 2,900. And then something else for six or 6,000. I don't know. I don't know what that is. But the total was 40,000 in total in 2017 so i don't know how much it's going to cost now and i'm sure it ranges with particular surgeons and then you also are paid like 300 rand for the bra you got to buy obviously this bra it's a very supportive full covering bra that you wear for like weeks after you get your breast done you have it put on immediately after you have your boobs done and then you keep it on for like weeks obviously because of the change in wash and stuff but if you have that i think let me actually get it. I'm sure I've still got it. I thought so. I've still got it. So this was my bra. Oh my gosh. I forgot about this. This was the bra that I bought from the doctors that is put on as immediately after you get your boobs done. Is it worth the pain? Hell yeah, it was totally worth the pain. And this is something that I almost say to everyone. Like that first week after you get your boobs done, you legit cannot do anything. You are in your bed. You can't even hold, you can't do this. You can't even lift them up. You cannot do this. You can't open your arms or lift them or do anything. It was, it, you can't even open your duvet cover to get out of bed or close it. Like it's very hectic in the first week. But this is what I tell everyone. It was also difficult, but I was sitting there with like a big fat smile on my face. Because I was just so happy. I was like, yes, I got my boobs done. I'm in pain and I can't do anything, but I got my boobs done. Woohoo! Do you have noticeable scarring? Um, so I have two scars right underneath my boobs. I got my breast augmentation underneath the boobs. You, there's obviously multiple ways you can go through the armpit, through the nipple, all these other things, through the belly button. But I got mine underneath um, my boobs two small little scars they are barely noticeable like you can hardly see them and i also went underneath the muscle so there's two options you can go over the muscle or underneath the muscle i chose to go underneath the muscle i don't know if this is entirely correct but this is what i've heard if you go underneath the muscle it's more expensive it's a little bit more painful um, but you can breastfeed um, and it's like a better more natural look if you go over the muscle it's a little bit more of the fake look i think if you go underneath the muscle it's a more natural look which is what i asked for so let me tell you about that what i asked for i decided to play it as safe as possible which is ridiculous because you pay that amount of money i should have gone bigger 
but I am very happy with them. I specifically told Dr. Barnard that I wanted to look as natural as possible, like I didn't even have my boobs done, which I totally kind of regret because if you're going to pay that amount of money, then you want something to, like to look like something. This is a padded bra that I'm wearing, by the way. If I took my, my bra off, it's pretty, they, my boobs look really natural. Like what I asked for is what I got exactly to the T. If I had to do it now at the age of 28, almost 29, I probably would have gone a little bit bigger. Um, but otherwise, um, I love my boobs. They way, I feel way more myself and ever since I got them done. So I'm very happy with them. But just think about your decision. You would rather want to go a little bit too big than a little bit too small, you know? That's what I think. Okay, so how many cc's did you get? Um, got this little sheet over here. It says I got 225 cc's in both, left and right. So 225 cc's and 225 cc's. They're very small implants, like super small. And I got the, there was another question here of what implants did I get? It's the, we got the gel breast implant cohesive. Yeah, there's probably, there's, they update implants like with modern times and modern technology, they're updating things constantly. So there's probably, now four years later, there's probably better implants out there, more natural or different texture that's even better than what I've got right now. Yeah, so just make sure you get the best, latest, newest, most healthiest implants that you can get. Another question. If there was one thing you could change about the procedure experience, what would it be? Nothing. Let me tell you though, the night in the hospital. So I got to the hospital really early on the 25th of July, and then I only had my operation in the afternoon, late in the afternoon, like four or five o'clock. And then I spent that night in the hospital, and then I left the hospital the next morning. But that night in the hospital, that was pretty cuck because you're completely alone and um, you can't do anything like at all. Thank goodness you're drugged up so you do sleep, but when you wake up, I woke up and I needed to pee. Okay, so here was the big problem. Oh my God, I will never forget this experience. It's terrible. And just so you let you know me, me and blood are not friends. Like ever since I can remember, ever since I was like 20, 20, 19 years old, I've been, Whenever I see needles or blood, I faint. Like I legit get lightheaded, everything leaves me and I faint. It's not fun at all. But here I am in the middle of the night, I wake up and I need to pee. Now you can't move anything, so all I did was press a button and it rings the nurse, right? So the nurse comes she, and you've got this whole drain and drip on a stand and everything. So you gotta take that whole thing with you and she helps you get out and she, you take the whole thing with you to the bathroom, okay? I'm sitting on the toilet. <sighs> Even to speak it, like, I have to be, like, prepared. <laughs> so I'm sitting on the toilet with my drip and sand and my, my hospital nighty thing. You know, this like, open at the back or whatever, I don't even know. Anyways, I'm sitting there and I just feel just water all gushing down my chest, like pouring. And I'm thinking maybe I'm like really sweating or what is this? Oh, goodness gracious. I look down and it's just blood, just blood pouring down my stomach. Oh, and immediately as I saw it, I literally got such a shock because I knew I was like, I'm gonna faint. And I shouted and I was like, nurse! Or I said that or her name, I can't remember. But I shouted, I remember shouting. And then she, and I didn't fall. Because imagine, imagine fainting after you had just got your, your boobs done. That's what kept playing in my mind. I was like, don't faint, don't faint, don't faint. Because imagine now you fall and you've just had that and like everything burst or whatever. I was like, ah, I was freaking out. So <laughs> I didn't fall though and I didn't faint, thank goodness. I don't know what happened, but the nurse took me back to my bed and I was okay. The second worst part was the next morning when the when Dr. Barnard comes, the surgeon comes to you in your bed and he pulls the drains out for you. Out of the holes at the bottom here, there's two drains and he pulls them out and they were long. Now that was gross as, that was bad. That was so gross. I can't even explain it. Oh, it's nasty because you feel it. 
pulling this whole these pipes out of you. Ooh. No, that wasn't fun. Oh, God. <laughs> Can't even speak about it. Okay, but anyways, those that, that was the only thing. That was those two things that were was bad. And then, yeah, I went home that morning after getting the drains taken out, and then for like the whole first week, I had someone looking after me, and yeah, they had to help me get in and out of bed. They had to help me shower and bath and clean myself. They had to feed me. They had to. I had to have a straw in my coffee or tea cup to be able to reach for it to drink because you can't lift anything up to your mouth. It's quite hectic. Um, yeah, but as I said, I was like smiling the whole way through. Are there any sort of activities you're no longer allowed to do when getting your boobs done? For obviously, for the first few weeks or months after you get your boobs done, there's lots of things that you can't do, like push-ups and stuff like that. That's it. Like you can't even think of wanting to do it. It's like. Mm. But then you slowly get used to it, you slowly get used to your body and you slowly start to work out, you obviously you heal and and then it's completely fine. It's, it doesn't feel much different. It, like you can't feel them there, but like you can still go back to normal of doing your normal sports and activities and gym or whatever. Are you still able to breastfeed? This was a good question because that's why I chose to go the more expensive route and more painful route of going underneath the muscle because I heard then you can still breastfeed. Only if you go underneath the muscle, you can still breastfeed. I don't know if you can still breastfeed if you go over the muscle. I'm not sure about that. So that's why I did go underneath the muscle because I really do want to be able to breastfeed my future children one day. And what cup size are you now? You see, this is why I went so small. I'm only a full 32B. It's tiny, it's like, oh my gosh, she got her boobs done for that. I know, right? Because like most women are chilling with like C's and D's and stuff. But like, yeah, I got a boob job to be a 32 um, B because I used to be in like AA. I was like flat, like flat, flat, like a boy. And I was gross. I just didn't want to feel like a boy. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to feel like the woman that I am. Anyways, so I'm a 32 B. Um, sometimes like a 32 C, I can fit into 32 C, but it's, I'm very short, so I always wanted to look like I was in proportion. It was a big deal to me. Like I wanted to look natural and in proportion. I've even still got like my medication stuff here from all the medicine that I had to take when I was back at home. Like I haven't thrown it all. I keep this all in an envelope. I hope I'm not in order, but it was just a very important moment in my life. You never know, I might need it for future reference. So that's my story. Um, 